In this segment, I'm going to show you a more subtle problem that can happen when you have multiple projects open at the same time. We'll start by creating two projects, each of which will contain several programs. Okay, so I already started up a new empty project. Um, and here, let me close the content editor by clicking on it. Um, I want to start by giving my project a name. We're going to call it, let's see, save project as, and let's call this animal sounds. Okay. And I have a new program, and this first program, I'm just double clicking on the word program so I can change the name. The first one we're going to call cat, and we're going to grab a sound block and click it on. And we are going to pick a sound from the animals menu called cat purr. And then we'll do another program. Let's add a new program. So I just clicked on that plus sign. This one, I double clicked again on the word program. We're going to call this one dog. Very exciting names. And we want to have a sound. And we're going to start again in the animals section. Uh, let's do a dog bark. And then after that, let's put in, I think there's a dog sniff in here. There we go. Okay. So there's our second program with two sounds. We're going to do one more program inside of our Animal Sounds project. So I clicked on the plus next to the programs and say new program. And I'm going to call this, double click on the words program, I'm going to call it Dino. And for this one, it's going to be very exciting. We're going to start with a picture. And we're going to look, click up here. And we'll take some Lego image files, and under eyes, we're going to take the angry eyes. Those look angry. And then we're going to have two sound files. We will start with an animal sound. Again, notice, by the way, that as I use project sounds, they get listed in here, but I want to use a new one. So I'm going to go through Lego sound, fi sound files into animal. And this time, we're doing dinosaur, so I want to have a T-Rex roar. <laughs> Okay, and then let's just add another sound after this, and I think if we put in dog growl, that sounds dinosaur-like to me. Okay, so I've already made sure that my robot is turned on. I'm going to download this. Okay, so let's move over. I'm going to use the right arrow to move over into the file menu. So there we go. And look, Animal Sounds is right at the top, so I'll click the middle button. And we run to run Dino. Look, there's our three programs. One, two, three, up at the top. So I'm going to run the Dino program, which is inside of the Animal Sounds project. Let me hit the middle button. Let's see what happens. Looks great. So... Oh, I see I've still got that star up there, which means I haven't saved this. I'm just going to save my project while I'm at it, while I'm thinking about it, save it on the computer. Okay, so let's create a new project called Greetings. So now I'm going to click on this plus sign up at the top to make a new project. Remember down here we add a program to our Animal Sounds project, but when I click up here on this top plus sign, I get a new project. So I'm going to make a new project. And right now it's called Project. Don't like that name at all, so I'm going to say in the File menu, Save Project As. Right. And let's rename it. Let's call this one Greetings. So G-R-E-E-T-I-N-G-S. There we go. All right, so now we've got our Greetings Project. And inside of our Greetings Project, right now we have one program called Program. I'm going to rename this and call it Hello. And inside of the hello program, I'm going to just have a single sound. And we'll grab a sound out of the greetings menu. Where are you, greetings menu? In communication, maybe? There we go. In communication menu, we've got hello. Hello. Okay. 
and I'm going to make another program. So I'm going to click on this bottom plus sign. Notice I'm making a new program. This menu comes up in the in the educational edition. In the in the home edition, it'll only just start you up with a new program. Let's double click on the word program to rename this one. This program I'm going to call Goodbye. And I'm sure you can guess how exciting this is going to be. We're going to go to the sound block again, and we're going to go into that communication, and our program is called Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. So that's it. Let's make sure we save our project. So I will do File, Save Project. So everything's saved up on my computer now, and let's click on Download. Okay, so we've got our animal sounds here, but we also have greetings. So I'm going to go into greetings now. And let's run the hello program. So I arrowed down, and now I'm going to push the middle button. Hello. That was great. Let's go. Well, we don't want to do greetings now, so let's go back up a level. And... I used that top button to go up a level, right? And now we're going to go down and let's run animal sounds. I want to try and run my dino project now. And there's dino. So I arrowed down. Now I'm going to push the middle button. And that worked great. And you can also see that under, under these three programs, the dino, the dog, and the cat program, you can see that any sounds that were associated with our program have gotten downloaded, as has this angry eyes picture. So all the pieces that we needed for our program got downloaded. Right, and I'm just arrowing up and down. And if I want to go back and look at greetings again, I can click this back up arrow. And now I think I need to up arrow to get to greetings. Well, that was pretty good. But let's change it up a bit. So first, I want to add, edit the Animal Sounds project. So I click on that tab up at the top. Um, and I want to go into the Dino program, which already seems to be open. If it weren't, I could just click on its little program tab. Um, and I want to add some extra eyes to the Dino in between the roar and the growl, right? So right now, you can see we have angry eyes then a sound that does a roar, and another sound that does a growl, and I want to stick some, some more eyes in there. So let's grab a, um, a display block, and let's squish it. Oop, I want to squish it right in there. And let's say image. We've got that, and let's go into eyes. Oops. And I want to put some dizzy eyes in there. Woohoo! All right, so there's our dishes. Now the dino program has angry eyes, T-Rex roar, dizzy eyes, dog growl, and let's just save this project on the computer. So I'm going to say file, save project. That saves everything we did on the computer. Um, and then let's edit the greetings project. And I want to go into the hello program. And what I want to do is, before we, before we say hello, let's just add a big smile. So we'll grab a display block again and kind of squish that in. You can see as I move up, the block kind of moves aside to let me in. And let's look at the image files. And I believe under expressions, there we go, we've got big smile. Okay, good. So let's save this project. Okay, so animal sounds saved on my computer. Greetings saved on my computer. Everything looks good. Let's hit download. Okay, so let's try the hello program that's in the greetings project. So I'll click the middle button to go in there and arrow down to get to hello and we'll run hello. hello. There we go and we got that nice smile, so that's good. And let's hit the back arrow or the, the back button up. And let's just run the dino program and see the two faces. So, or the two sets of eyes, right? So I backed out, I 
went up to the um, animal sounds. Now I'm in animal sounds and I want to run, oh, heck, I don't know what I did, but I ended up in this, in the wrong menu. Look at that, I'm in the, I'm in the recently played menu and I wanna be in the, in the files menu. So let's right arrow over. So now we're in there, that looks better. And let's go into animal sounds. And there we go, there's Dino. And let's push the button. Huh. We added an extra set of eyes, but they don't seem to be there. Let's try again. And, you know, if I, if I move up and go left into, into this recently played projects, if I run it in there, or recently pr run programs, I click on Dino. There always seems to be just one set of eyes, so something weird is happening. Let's see what's going on. So do you know why the Dino program didn't work? You may want to rewind this video back to the beginning and watch again to see if you can spot the problem. Okay, let's review what we did. First, we created the Animal Sounds project with several programs in it. We hit download and all of those programs were downloaded to the EV3. Next, we created the Greetings project and put two programs in there and downloaded them. Next, we modified the Dino program. Then we modified the Hello program. While we were looking at the Hello program in the Greetings project, we hit Download. So the updated version of the Greetings project ended up on the EV3. So the reason we didn't see the dizzy picture on the Dino is because we never downloaded that version of the program to the EV3. From the EV3's point of view, everything worked perfectly. You told it to download the Greetings project, so it did. As a result, it had an updated version of the Hello program. But you didn't tell it to download the Animal Sounds project, so it didn't do so. As a result, the Dino program on the EV3 was not updated. The EV3 downloaded exactly what you asked to be downloaded and nothing more. What happened next? You told the EV3 to run its version of the Dino program. It did so. It did exactly what you told it to do, just not what you wanted or expected it to do. You might argue that the EV3 didn't behave logically, that when you hit the download button, the EV3 should get a new version of all of your programs. And yeah, if someone from LEGO came up to me and said, hey, Jenny, tell us how this should work. I would tell them that when you do a download, if you have multiple projects open that have been changed, you should ask the user exactly what they want to download. That brings us to a key concept in computing. Computers are just not very smart. In the case of the EV3, it works the way it's been designed to work, which is not necessarily how you or I would have designed it, but it's the only way it knows how to work. Remember the peanut butter and jelly example? Computers take everything you say very literally, even if what you tell them to do doesn't make sense. Even if what you want them to do is obvious to you, it's not obvious to them. Whenever something appears to go wrong with your EV3, or with your computer in general for that matter, it can often help to keep this in mind.